Okay, welcome everyone to the second episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we'll take some common fitness or nutrition myth, look at where that myth got started, and why it's actually wrong based on an objective look at current scientific literature. So this week we're gonna take a closer look at the idea that you should consume protein within 30 to 60 minutes following a workout. So this is the so-called anabolic window. So first, where did this myth come from? So for a long time, bodybuilders have consumed protein powders or high protein foods after training. And the theory says that since weight training is a damaging process to muscle, creating micro tears and so on, then it makes sense that you should repair that muscle and flick on the anabolic switch, as it were, as quickly as possible after training. Now, taken to the extreme, some bodybuilders will argue that if you miss your protein feeding within that hour after your workout, then you more or less wasted that entire workout because you missed the anabolic window. And I will say that this isn't just bro science. The anabolic window has found its place in the scientific peer-reviewed literature as a legitimate hypothesis. In 2002, Lemon and colleagues spoke of a limited anabolic window of opportunity for post-workout anabolism. And a 2013 review from Ivy and Ferguson made a big deal out of nutrient timing, suggesting that when carbs and protein are ingested in the minutes post-exercise, glucose and amino acids initiate the shift to an anabolic state. And the authors recommend getting your post-workout nutrients in within 45 minutes of training. And this is based on a good chunk of evidence. They cited a total of 134 papers in their review. So maybe there is something to this myth after all, uh, but before we jump to any conclusions, let's look at where it might have gone wrong. So where did it go wrong? Well, the very same year the Ivy paper was published in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, Brad Schoenfeld, Alan Aragon, and Jim Krieger published a meta-analysis analyzing 20 studies that met a strict inclusion criteria. And lo and behold, after crunching all the data, it turns out a, quote, small to moderate effect was seen for protein timing on lean mass gain. However, what changed the game was a sub-analysis which showed that the majority of the hypertrophic differences noted in the timing studies, including many of those in the Ivy review, could be explained entirely by differences in total daily protein intake. So basically many of the studies touting a positive effect of nutrient timing simply had the subjects in the post-workout group eating more total protein for the day. And this led the authors to conclude that the results would seem to refute the commonly held belief that the timing of protein intake in the immediate pre and post-workout period is critical to muscular adaptation. But there is a little bit more to it than that. We've known as early as 1997 that weight training alone results in a long-lasting elevation in muscle protein synthesis for at least 48 hours after training. And just look at this figure from a 2014 review out of McMaster University. What we're seeing here is that resistance training stimulates a prolonged elevation of muscle protein synthesis that can remain elevated for at least 48 hours after training. And the initial spike in sensitivity to amino acids appears to be about two and a half to three hours, much broader of a window than the previously proposed 45 minutes. Schoenfeld also notes in a later 2017 paper, the interval for protein intake may be as wide as several hours or perhaps more after a training bout, depending on when the pre-workout meal was consumed. And I think that this is an important point. If amino acids are still in the system from the pre-workout meal, the specific timing of the post-workout meal is clearly of less critical importance. And for this reason, Schoenfeld and others have proposed that there's a roughly four to six hour window around the training session. So let's say you eat your pre-workout meal one hour before training, and then you train for an hour, you'd still have you know three or four hours in the post-workout period to still hit the window. On the other hand, if you happen to train fasted, or maybe you haven't eaten for two to three hours before your workout, then it'd be more important to get that post-workout protein in faster and you might wanna get it in within that first hour or so after training. So for some more clarity on this, a 2017 position stand from the International Society of Sports Nutrition recommends post-exercise ingestion of protein immediately to two hours following training. But they also suggest that the pragmatic recommendation is to feed as soon as possible after the workout, since not eating doesn't offer any benefit for hypertrophy. So coming full circle, I think my biggest gripe with the anabolic window is that people view it as exactly that a window that's closing, and once it's closed, after a half an hour, or an hour, or two hours, then you missed that opportunity for gains. But we know it simply doesn't work like that. We know that weight training primes the muscle to be more sensitive to amino acids for at least 24 to 48 hours after training, and in the context of sufficient total daily protein intake, the specific timing of post-workout protein matters much less. And rather than think of post-workout anabolic signaling as an on-off switch, where you can either flick it on within that 
first hour following training or it just remains off. I like to instead think of it as a sort of turn dial where you can turn it up to varying degrees based on how you dose and how you time your protein feedings. But if you happen to miss time or underdose them a little bit, you can still get that dial turned most of the way up and still make a great deal of progress. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up the protein part of this video. I will say there's an enormous body of literature that I completely skipped on the timing of carbohydrates around the workout. In short, let's just assume that the primary goal here is to build muscle. And in that case, I don't think that timing carbohydrate in the post-workout period really matters that much at all. Uh, provided protein is being consumed, and if it's being consumed on its own, then that's plenty. First, eating carbs on their own for the sake of replenishing glycogen after a workout is futile because high-intensity resistance exercise with moderate volume has only been shown to reduce glycogen stores by 36 to 39% anyway, which can very easily be replenished after the workout, assuming some amount of carbohydrate is being eaten within that 24 hours following training. And I think eating carbs for the sake of spiking insulin is equally futile because the amount of an insulin spike that you need to see to suppress muscle protein breakdown can be accomplished through just eating protein alone or through a simple mixed meal. So in my opinion, slamming a high glycemic carb shake or some other similar product post-workout isn't gonna do much for hypertrophy other than provide empty calories. Okay, so that's gonna conclude this one, guys. Um, as you'll see, uh, this isn't really a cut and dry issue, and I wouldn't say that the myth is completely busted on this one. Instead, what I would say is it probably depends on you and your individual goals. If you're an advanced level athlete who's looking to gain every morsel of muscle that you possibly can, uh, then it might be smart for you to consume protein as quickly as you can after your workout. Um, if on the other hand you're just someone who's looking to improve your muscle mass and perhaps uh, improve your overall size and shape then I don't think that your priority should necessarily be placed on hitting that anabolic window of opportunity. Instead you should place more focus on eating sufficient total daily protein intake which is a video that I, I definitely have on the way. And if you do happen to miss the so-called post-workout anabolic window of opportunity uh, you don't need to really worry. Uh, you can still make plenty of progress. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave me a like if you like the video. Uh, please comment below any myths you'd like to hear me cover in a future Myth Bust Monday. And if you're reading through the comments, upvote the other myths that other people have commented so that I can see them better uh, if you think that they'd be a good topic. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you guys all next Monday.